Hello folks, and welcome to this new format of video that I've been thinking about doing for quite some time. Basically, with so much increased awareness and enthusiasm for historical wargaming, particularly the Second World War, and with war games such as Bolt Action and Flames of War really taking on, which are even capturing some of the 40k and Warhammer crowd's attention as well. For many of that audience, wargaming is their introduction to the war, for instance, which I think is amazing. And wargaming as a whole can be this incredible gateway into history. And that's where I wanted to aim with these videos. For our first video, I am painting a World War II German Panzer Trek team. The models are 28mm figures from Warlord Games. The Panzer Trek was an anti tank rocket launcher designed by the Germans and came into service from 1943. It was a much needed upgrade to the anti-tank rifles that infantry carried during the earlier war periods, which were simply not adequate to take on the increasing armour thickness of allied tanks. The Panzerschreck was developed based on a captured American bazooka during the Tunisian campaign in 1942. However, instead of firing a 60mm projectile like the bazooka, the Panzerschreck fired an 88mm calibre, so it was certainly a very capable piece of kit and could handle most allied tanks from an effective range up to 150 meters, giving a lot more anti-tank punch to your average infantry section. Focusing on the painting here, we're looking at the splinter camo scheme, which was the standard for the Wehrmacht forces in World War II. To create an impression of the camo, we start by applying sharp edged lines of chocolate brown. I then apply Luftwaffe green mixed with intermediate green to add sharp edged shapes alongside the brown. Remember that we are creating a scaled down impression of the scheme here, and so we need to simplify things somewhat so that it is identifiable on the gaming table or from around three foot away. This next part's optional, but I use very thin down Luftwaffe green to apply the water streaks in the camo scheme. I think it's important to point out that come 1943, the German army has suffered some major defeats, namely at Stalingrad in the east and Tunisia on the Western Front. They are now on the back foot, so to speak, and considered by many as the turning point in the war. So the importance of this weapon is particularly crucial for an army which is starting to switch to the defensive. Also, with Germany's diminishing economy, supplies and logistics, it's easy to understand why they were needing to find solutions or some way of competing against the ever-increasing or massed Allied tank production on both fronts, which Germany simply could not compete with. With manpower and logistics problems such as these, and as well as being in a more defensive posture, the importance of a relatively cheap but potent anti-tank weapon becomes increasingly more critical. The Panzerschreck was very capable of taking out most Allied armour on the battlefield, to the point where many Allied tank crews were applying improvised armour in the form of sandbags and tank tracks on the hulls of their vehicles. However, these additions were largely ineffective. Allied tank crews developed a well-documented fear of the Tiger tank, which became deep-rooted. In actual fact, most tank sightings being called out as being a Tiger were more likely to be a Panzer IV or something else, which is understandable as the infamous 88mm gun on the Tiger was a formidable opponent and had struck terror into the psyche of many Allied tank crew. However, the chances of coming up against the Tiger tank were very slim in reality you are far more, far more likely to be knocked out by an anti-tank gun lurking in the hedgerow, or indeed a Panzerschreck from a couple of guys waiting in ambush. It was certainly more cumbersome than the US bazooka due to its size and created more smoke when fired. Clear limitations. However, the trade-off that cannot be denied is that the larger caliber rocket ensured that the Panzerschreck was a massive threat on the battlefield and could not be ignored. Wrapping up these models, I then paint the flesh using my usual techniques 
and apply a shade to the uniforms, some matte varnish once dry and then the usual basing materials. And these guys are done. I hope you've enjoyed this first history chat video. I'd love to hear your feedback. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, or consider supporting me on Patreon. Until the next one, thanks for watching.